So he's laying on the couch, bro. He's like this. And I fucking <laughs> bro. And I said, and I slapped him. I said, wake up. <laughs> Don't air this shit, bro. Welcome back to the PO3 Podcast. My name is Marcus Marks. And beside me, we got Just John. Just John. I like the confidence, man. I'm digging it. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's finally coming around. I dropped my little comb. Hold on. How you doing, bro? It's, been, it's been a minute. It's, it's, yeah, it's been <laughs> some time. I, yeah. I feel like a minute is described, like used to describe like a, a significant period of time. I don't think it's been that long, but it's been, it's been a second. Yeah. Where you been, dog? Just freaking doing life, man. Are we still friends? I mean… I think so. I hope so. I haven't heard from him at all. Like he just went MIA. Like he hasn't texted me, called me back. He hasn't returned any of my postcards. Okay, this is a lie. I texted him babe this morning, so… Yeah, he did. On accident, <laughs> but I was flattered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you it know, I, like, I, like I told you, I, I for real have sent like family members text messages like that that were meant for someone int- intimate, but accidentally got sent to the wrong person. Yeah. So that was embarrassing. It's always a… The follow-up text is always… I bet you what makes it funny. Like you're… Whoever receives a message is like, what the hell? And then like, hey, sorry. This was meant for my girlfriend or whatever. A dick pic. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like you Granted, told me. I've never sent that to the wrong person. Well, I Wait, I mean, I don't send those out. Actually, I accidentally sent a dick pic to my dad. And then he sent one back. Just to prove he was bigger. But… And did he… Did he Prove it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That'd be <laughs> fucking disturbing, bro. Isn't that a bit already that somebody has that? What? That's got to be a bit already. Like for a comedian? Yeah, yeah. Like that just exactly how I said it has to be, right? I apologize. I feel, like, I feel, like, if, I feel like if it's actually happened. <laughs> oh, I mean, come on. Of course it's happened. But like, like just, as a bit. Has remember when actually... cell phones had like the like message to everybody in yeah, your yeah. contacts? And you just like hit that by chance and it's you know, uh-huh. D-pick and… <laughs> You remember when you had to fucking like one two three S one two three A one C one or like whatever oh, like you yeah, had to yeah. fucking like it was called T nine or something like that. T uh, nine was like the prediction one. So like when you would you could just hit the number the one time and it would like predict you know the list of possible words that were gonna fall within those number sequence you pushed. No, I remember Andrew did T nine. I think yeah, he knew I was, how to do it. Yeah, see, that's what I used for when I had the remember the Nokia or not the Nokia it was the uh, Motorola Rocker. It was like the… No, not the sidekick. No, right? that was Andrew's phone. The, oh, okay. the rocker was the first phone they had with iTunes on it. It was like the little white cube looking thing. I love that phone that he had. It had the little red and blue light that would light up. Yeah. And he, just, he would get a text and he would… Yeah. He, 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 he strikes me as like a dude who has a fidget spinner. You know, I don't hang out with them enough anymore to know that he does or doesn't. God but damn I, it, dude. If you guys are watching, Went go down ahead the and send this direction. The what? I <laughs> said, so if you, those of you that are watching, please contact your local EMS and send them this direction. Marcus uh, Mars here to be having some difficulty breathing. I fucking drank this right before we started and then it went down the wrong pipe. The wrong pipe would get you every time. to drink more. Anyway, I wanted to point out the new sign. How do you like it? It looks rather amazing. <laughs> so I made this sign by myself. <coughs> Fuck, dude. <clears throat> I, I was kind of in over my head. I, I wanted to get our actual logo. In a neon sign, right? But I didn't feel like paying fucking $500. So I was like, well, let me just go look for the pieces. <coughs> so I went… <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I went to Hobby Lobby and I went and got the individual letters and stuff. And then um, went to Home Depot, got some wood and chopped the wood, stained it up. Uh, you know, and then put it all together and stuff. And I thought I was going to ruin the sign. And I was like, fuck, dude, I think I'm just wasting my money. It was only like 80 bucks, really. But um, <laughs> ended up coming out really, really good. I'm like yeah. super happy with it. It looks a lot bigger in person. But on here, it's like a little bit smaller. But it looks great. Well, yeah. It's, it's, what's the distance? <clears throat> uh, I don't you know. know I think like it's 15 like 10 feet. Yeah, I think it's like 10 feet. Um, but the only thing I don't like is the whole point of me raising those letters up and made, making them like stand off the board for uh, like a 3D effect. was So the LEDs behind could shine through, right? And I w- as I was drilling the holes… I <clears throat> the holes, I was like, is this going to be big enough? And I was pretty sure it was. And then I got it home. I slapped the lights on there. And then the fucking light didn't shine through. I was like, fuck, bro. So that's like the only thing I don't like about it. Because the, the, you're supposed to get some back glow from those letters. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I'll, I'll probably fix it in the future. But I was super excited to have 
a sign. Like, I feel like that's what makes it an official podcast. Like, for me at least, all the podcasts that I watch, they have their own logo and their own sign and everything. And I've always wanted that. Like, you ever seen Hustle and Flow? Yeah. When she puts the chain on Whoa, DJ. <laughs> she's like, he's like, oh, shit. She's like, I just be watching some movies. Like, and all them rappers have, like, some kind of chain. <laughs> and he pulls it out. And it's like a fucking DJ chain. And it, that was, like, the moment he was, like, officially a rapper. You know what I mean? That movie, man, I swear. Like, that first beat. Dun, 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 dun. He's like, find it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, that's one of my favorite movies still. It's a good movie. My fiance don't like Ludacris in there because he's a bully. I was like, um, that's ludicrous, though. He, 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 <laughs> he was kind of a prick, though. He I was, mean, but I fucking lo- I, I love Ludacris. He was like an underrated rapper in my in my opinion. But yeah, that, you know, that was, honestly, I can't think of a song that I could say that I like roll thorough. out. It was like for the time it was cool, but like looking back on it, I have never went like, you know, I'm gonna throw on some Ludacris. But he wasn't a hit. Ma- well, he, actually, he was. I lied. He was a hit maker. He's just not like on the level that Drake was, but. In all, like, avenues, he was unique. Like, everything about him was unique. Like Disclaimer, I don't really care for Drake. Oh, I don't either. Just to set the record straight, I don't listen to him. And you'll never catch me listening to him. Not that he's a bad artist. He's a great artist. But it's not my cup of tea. I feel like he, he appeals to the younger crowd. Yeah, the only song that I liked from Drake was Ransom. Mm. Back when he was first… <laughs> You know what it is if you heard Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I remember. Yeah, you used to bump that shit all the time. Yeah, that was like the only song. And that was because like Wayne was there to, like, to me influence the majority of that track. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. So like it was not like I really cared for Drake. But that's like the only song I could think about looking back and say like, yeah, that's a Drake song that I actually like. And that yeah. was when he was up and coming not to be that guy. Like, oh, I knew him before he was, you know, it was just… That was the only song that I like. Yeah. Anyway, though, so uh, it's, I'm glad to have you back. Um, hey, glad to be back. So he didn't go anywhere. He just uh, he had a to vac- I don't, I don't little vacation. Little yeah, vacation. Yeah, just a little vacation and stuff. But so. I wasn't tripping though, just because we already had like three episodes like in the archives ready to go. So I was like, whatever, you know what I mean. But I ended up shooting another episode with a buddy of mine, and that's gonna come out as episode 31, and this will be episode 32. So that will already be out by the time that that airs. You know, yeah, because I just put out. We just put out 29 today. We did 30 together. And then 31 is the uh, the week that you… What's it called? Is it? I thought that was the one that we discussed getting hit by a car. No, that was 30. Oh, okay. okay yeah, okay. that's 30. That's 30. I'm going to bleep that. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, uh, yeah. so this is 32 right here. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know why you bleep that because this is going to come out after… Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such an idiot. But like… It, it, it is like hard keeping track of the episodes it and stuff. Is. Sometimes I'll… Be, I don't know though. Like… If we end up filming like three or whatever… Like it, I could just pick and choose which one is going to be which. Like it doesn't have to go in like… Persic- numerical order. Yeah. Like it really doesn't. Like Or one that's not even that good of after you're reviewing it. You don't yeah, have to air it, you know? Oh, I, I mean, yeah. It just depends. I just… I haven't done that yet with any of our episodes. Like I've just… Uh, I just put them all out, really. I just, like I said, I want it to be organic. So if there is some dead air sometimes, whatever, I'm human. You know, that's not, they're not all going to be bangers. So You didn't hear that. They're all going to be bangers. They're all going to be bangers. Uh, so I have a little list here of just like things that I wrote down. Just ideas that were going through my head. Um, and these are just kind of like starting points. So the first one is, they should have called Jolly Ranchers Happy Cowboys. <laughs> Does that make sense? I can't with you, Renato. <laughs> you, and the, the sad part is you, you can't even argue that. Like, that's <laughs> it's probably like literally what it means. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Jolly ranchers. Yeah, yeah. Happy okay. cowboys. No, I got it. Or happy farmers. <laughs> one of the two. One oh, of the two. man. Uh, okay, here's another one. Uh, show John picture of Mikey and then play 10-year anniversary of Chocolate Rain song. Because he put out a 10-year anniversary of Chocolate Rain. <laughs> so I wanted to pull it up. But I don't know if it's going to get copywritten claim. So. Uh, I think there's a, a little way around it. Like you have to pause it every 10 or 15 seconds. To but not, I wanted… But so who does that look like to you? That's not my <laughs> <laughs> I'll put the picture up here. So I saw this on Instagram. And I was like, dude, what the fuck? Mike, you got a face tat, dude? <laughs> it's not him. Look at… <laughs> so those are the starting points I wanted to go. 
I almost sent it to you, but I was like, no, let me save it. I want his real, like, in, in, in real time reaction. Oh, I put that away, please. Please put that away. Oh, fuck. I apologize for, for all the laughter. <laughs> I almost spit out my red, but remember that one time I made you spit your coke out? On accident, you spit it all over me. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> okay. Shout out Mikey. Oh man. Dude, I was crying. Okay. I just wanted to start off with that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, dude, everyone wants to speak into speaking stuff out of that uh, like a drink. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I don't know who did that I, not look like Mikey, dude. I thought it was him. Okay, so I found a picture of Meeks that was just like that, but of Meeks on the Maury show. Really? But I can't find it. So yeah, oh, the comedy's. No. What, what are you gonna take a like, Google search? Like you can't, bro. It's just a random episode. <laughs> the guy that the, looks like Meeks on Maury. <laughs> yeah. Like how am I gonna find that? It was, it was once in a lifetime, and it, it happened <sighs> so quick. I was just watching it live, so I was like, oh shit, I have to snapshot this because I don't have like TiVo or anything. Dude, I can't I'm rewind so hard it. Not to laugh still. <laughs> Good laugh, bro. Let it out. I think I thought it was hilarious. So how you laughed right there <laughs> is how I laughed when I found that picture. So I screenshot. <laughs> I know there's no context for you guys, but like one of our buddies, it looks exactly like him. Hey, send that to me so I can send it to him. <laughs> okay, yeah, please, please. Tell him to call in. Whew. Uh, All right. <clears throat> anyway, back to the spitting the drink out. So I don't know who I was with, but uh <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who I was with. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not even going to read the rest of the notes. Yeah. I don't know who I was with, but I was at a movie theater. It was with some of the guys. And somebody said something stupid, and I spit my drink out, but there's people directly mm. in front of me, mm. like sitting down, and I spit all in this chick's hair. And so she turns around, and she's just like, what do you do? In that? And I was just like, oh my God, I am so sorry. Like, what, I mean, what do you do? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, what did she do? She just turned around. Like, she had like a, like a perm or something. Else. It was like a big old thing of hair. So I don't think it really affected her too much. But uh, I thought I was going to get in a fight because her boyfriend was just like, look. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's tough. Like, if somebody did that to my girl, I'd probably, yeah. Uh, I don't know, though. It depends on you. It depends on the person. Like, of course, I'd be pissed off. I'd probably call him an idiot or something. But like if you were genuinely sorry about it… Yeah, I mean a, like… A, it's just like… I mean they heard us all laughing. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so it wasn't yeah. like I did… Like it was just… Were they older or younger? No, nah, they were probably in our age group at that time. Yeah, they didn't look… Oh, okay. But it was just kind of like… It wasn't like it was complete silence and all of a sudden just… Psh, you know, I sprayed her. It was like there was a bunch mm. of laughter going on. Then shortly thereafter it took place. But… Yeah, you do that a lot. Like I said a joke one time a long time ago and you fucking spewed… Coca-Cola all over me and shit. I was like, fucking John, dude. I think we're at Taco Mo. <laughs> Could have been, yeah. Yeah. There was also one time uh, we were at Denny's. There was a pretty big group of us. And Mikey, <laughs> he, I think he like legitimately laughed and he spit his Coke out and it hit me and I got mad. So then I just put Coke in my mouth and just spit it on him. Oh, like, on purpose? Yeah, I was like, you little, you know, like… Uh-huh. And then I thought it was funny because then the waitress is coming later with drinks and she spills a drink on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Bro, was... I, I have stories like that that I don't even know if I want to reveal. Like about you remember Loretto and Eric? Mm-hmm. Did I say it? You could just bleep out the names, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's not gonna matter, like, really. It's not it's nothing like illegal or anything like that. It's just kids being stupid. Like it's not a free game to me. Huh? Sounds like free game to me. It is, but it's just what I did. Is is like really fucking. Well, now we're all okay. waiting. So okay. tell us. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, so you remember how we used to like go bowling a lot? Okay, and we were in high school. <laughs> we we're in high school, bro. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I thought he texted me back. I, thought he said to him. I wasn't expecting. That. <laughs> You have to update that as, as his contact I'm picture now. I'm going to. I'm sorry. So, Okay. Dude. So we were going bowling. Remember like… That was like the only shit to do. Is like either go to the football games or go bowling or some shit like that. Like yes. something was always popping, right? And back in the day, like if Loretto and Eric were around… There was always going to be girls around and shit. And 
for whatever reason, they were just popular. And uh, I lived right down the street from <laughs> Eric. Sorry, I'll probably believe his last name. <laughs> I live right down the street from him. And um, so he invites me over one day. They're going to go bowling around like seven or something like that. But I didn't have a haircut. So I go over there. Loretto and Eric are just fucking around. I was like, damn, dude, I don't have a haircut. What should I wear? And like, should I just wear a hat? And I was like, oh, I'll cut your hair. And me being an idiot, I fucking fell for it, bro. I was like, are you sure? Like, you know how to cut? I don't think you know how to cut hair. And we just right there playing like along with him. And he was like, yeah, bro, he can cut hair and this and that. So he goes into the bathroom and he gets his brother's uh, clippers. And I'm sitting there and I have like my shirt off and there's like a towel over me. And he starts going up and they're just laughing the whole time, bro. Because he started off at skin, like zero. <laughs> like on the side. Like, you're, I don't know what the fuck he was trying to do. Like fade it or whatever. Long story short, I ended up with like a fucking military cut with no fade, bro. It's just like, just imagine, imagine Lloyd Christmas, but like shorter but, and higher. And it looked like a fucking uh, military, like high and tight type of cut. And I was like, dude, you, and it wasn't straight either. Like it was crooked and stuff. And I'm, su I was still such an idiot. I didn't tell him to stop. I was like, are you going to fix it? He's like, yeah, hold on. They start cracking up even more, right? And then he goes and gets a fucking razor. And oh, I fucking, there was, I didn't know it was his brother's used razor, bro. A fucking razor that he probably used to like shave his pubes or some shit like that, right? <laughs> and he's fucking shaving it. Now it's skin skin. <laughs> and at the end of it, my head is so fucking red. And I developed like these all razor bumps along all, the, my whole head, bro. It was just white fucking razor bumps. And it was red the whole time. And I was fucking furious, bro. Because we were supposed to go out. So... I just imagine, but my head's all fucked up, bro. And I'm a kid. And this is when my confidence is like very, very <laughs> fragile. You know what I mean? I'm already struggling. I had rat teeth and everything. Like, they were caught, like, bro, it was bad. And so <laughs> I remember I wanted to fight Eric one time. He called me a rat and I fucking I was trying to fight him and shit. And uh, it was fucking hilarious. So I was like, dude, you fucked my head up. Bro, I was like, what's wrong with you? Like, you fucked my head up. And they were like unremorseful about it, you know, mm -hmm. laughing and shit and just having a good time. And the joke was on me. I was like, fuck, bro. I guess I'm going to have to wear a hat now. I ended up going anyway, like to bowling and shit with the hat. But he's taking a nap later on the couch, right? He's, <laughs> he's taking a nap on the couch. The guy who cut my hair. And I seen him taking a nap. And I was like, it's a good opportunity for fucking revenge here, bro. And one of our homies was there too. I go, here, pull the camera out. And I fuck my Bro. <laughs> I don't think anybody knows this story except for me and the dude that took the picture. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so humiliated to tell this story. I might not air this. Um, so he's laying on the couch, bro. He's like this. And I fucking <laughs> bro. And I said, I slapped him. I said, wake up. <laughs> don't air this shit, bro. Please don't air this. He woke up, bro. He got so fucking pissed, bro. And my homie was right there just with the camera, bro. Because I wanted to make him feel humiliated. Like how he made me feel, bro. I was like, well, what's more you, humiliating? You can't air this <laughs> shit. <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> Do whatever I want. And I don't want to be in this episode anymore. <laughs> Let's just start from scratch. We can't do this shit. I can't. I can't. <laughs> this will have to be like a. Hey, you wanted to know. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I, I had no clue this is where it was headed. I, I thought you were going to shave his eyebrows or something. <laughs> Wouldn't you be humiliated? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What about the dude that's recording this shit? He just gave me the thumbs up, bro. <laughs> so I just thought it would be okay. And then the dude fucking wakes up in a rage, bro. And he fucking hocks a fat ass loogie on me. I was like, I got you back, bitch. <laughs> and then I, just, I had to set the fucking playing field evenly. I had to make the scoreboard even, dude. I was down. What are you supposed to do? Bases are loaded, bro. It's World Series. 
<laughs> it's so ninth you, inning. So you resort to committing a fucking crime? <laughs> I didn't, bro. He fucked my head up. Oh man, my head was fucked. Okay. So, so was my confidence. I had to get it back somehow. That was, oh my god, drastic situations or what was it? Desperate situations call for desperate measures. And I had to go there. I couldn't even look at you. <laughs> <laughs> this has been another episode of the Field 3 <laughs> Hope you guys had a good week. Uh, all right. You can't air this shit. <laughs> I'm going to air it. I don't give a fuck. I don't want to be serious. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yes. You didn't do it. I didn't... St- <laughs> oh god <sighs> Is that savage or is that just weird I don't I don't I don't know if there's a word that exists In the language to <laughs> I need a napkin hold on Oh my goodness <sighs> Fuck I'm all hot now and shit <sighs> Oh. Okay, we're back. I apologize. Um, it's supposed to be a mental health podcast. Yeah. Well, you see why I'm fucked up, right? <laughs> That's why I need issues. That's why I have issues. Oh, my girl would not be proud of that one. Yeah, let's not let the world know about that one. That's kind of- I don't care. <laughs> I'll probably just bleep it out and let them just let it be a mystery. Like yeah, as to what I did. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah? Yes. Okay, I'll I'll bleep it, bro. I'll fucking bleep it. And I think that'll be part of the comedy. Just like the unknown, you know? <laughs> oh my God. Bro, you don't even know the shit that went on in that house. I, I'm, you know what, dude? From all the stories that I've collected from you, Mikey, and a few <sighs> other people that used to go there a lot, I'm glad that I don't have any stories. Because I have one story and I will not say because it is very, very bad. That's fine. That's for you. I'll tell you off, off screen. Okay. It's 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 actually funny, but I'm not even gonna know. And uh, <clears throat> but yeah, like shooting paintballs in the house, driving their cars oh in the God. backyard, like it was a fucking free for all. Freaking peeing everywhere, <laughs> bro. He used to <laughs> when the ice cream man would come by, <laughs> and he would ask us what he wanted. He'd whip his dick out and point at which ice cream he wanted <laughs> with his fucking dick, bro. The kid was out of his mind. Yeah. He was a it was fun times though, bro. Yeah, I can say I'm honestly. It was fun times, bro. I had a lot of good memories there. The few times that I was there, I could honestly say that I don't know what it was. They wouldn't go into those nefarious (laughs) activities that you just sat there and described (laughs) when I was there. So Hey, hey, this one was on me though. But I had to get my revenge, bro. Jesus. Bro, how would you feel if someone did that to you? I don't know if I'd be that mad to go do. <laughs> I wasn't mad. I was just like, all right, well, game on. Like, this is chess now. <laughs> I don't know if that you're just going to like shave his head in the middle and get rid of his eyebrows or something. No, it goes deeper than that. Uh, apparently. We were cool. Like, he didn't even get mad. It was like, he just, he knew like, okay. It is what it is. Like, one of my, I fucked his head up. Like, I had that one coming. <laughs> in some perverse world, I guess. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, that's my, that's my way of justifying it. Oh, Jesus, that was funny. I'm sorry, dude. I just... That was... Next time I'll take your advice. <clears throat> Better off not knowing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me, dude. I, to- I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you. You didn't tell me shit. <laughs> I don't even uh, know where to go from here, you know, bro. I don't, man. I'm like still like all lightheaded from laughing so damn hard. <laughs> Dude, we were just talking about when did I mention this? What? I was like, I can't wait till I'm sitting here in tears. Oh, the last one that we did. Yo, that's not even the hardest I can go either. <laughs> I can go way harder than that. Let's... I'm talking about like on the ground rolling, like begging for my life and shit. Like I laughed that hard, bro. I, I could just tell he's looking at me like, bro, I'm so disappointed in you. <laughs> I I just don't know what to make of that information. <laughs> Well, it is what it is. I mean, do with it what you will. Erase it. Suppress it. Okay. Now we're back. (laughs) Okay.
So on to… Uh, I don't think we could top that. <laughs> so going back to mental health. <laughs> yeah, like hey, that's a, a brilliant segue. There's, there's, yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. I, I don't know if I could top that, bro. It's, you're up, Kip. <laughs> I'm swinging a miss. <laughs> <laughs> Swing away, John. Oh, man. That's… That was, there's nothing… I don't know. What, I think we should end here. No, do you believe in aliens? I want to kind of talk about it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like you said, interesting segue. <laughs> we got to do something, bro. Okay, so aliens. Uh, um, yes, I would say that I believed uh, in aliens. I, okay, I do. I'm fascinated by the possibility of them. Um, I can't say I'm fascinated with them in the sense that I don't know that they truly exist. But I used to believe that they would, you know, little UFOs. and They'd come over here and, and look at us and then leave or whatever. Have you ever seen one? Uh, no. I I I think I have a couple times, but it was nothing very like compelling to make me sit there and be like, "Yo, that is and in fact a UFO." You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. But um, who was it? Uh, he's an uh, astrophysicist by the name of Brian Cox, and he had he says, "Yes, I do believe just because of how big the you know the universe is that the likelihood that we are the only you know beings out here that are you know have consciousness it's is psycho yeah. is is you know there's." The numbers don't say that it's impossible. Um, it's highly unlikely that we're the only ones. Well, what he says is that the it's highly unlikely that we'll ever come in contact with them just be due to the vast distances between everything in space. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of where I'm at with it now. It's just kind of like, yeah, dude, they're probably out there somewhere. But if it takes like light, which is the fastest moving thing that we can measure in space, you know, you know, years to get from point A to point B. Like, we're not going to be able to go that fast, you mm-hmm. know, because anything that has mass can't travel at the speed of light. So we're made of mass. We have mass, so we can't go that fast. So I don't know that unless they have some sort of other f- set of physics that we're not aware of and they can manipulate space time, then yeah. maybe. But if the brightest people out there are saying that it's likely that they're not, we're too far away, then I'm going to run with that. Yeah. What about you? I really want to, and most likely they are real. And I want to believe that. I do want to believe it. But it's just like, you can't really believe anything like 100% until you like see it for yourself, you know? So, I mean, there's like that 5% in my brain that's like, maybe not. But 95 the other on the other side is like, I believe, you know? And that's just because, going back to what you said, how can there not be? In this fucking vast universe, you know what I mean? There's billions and billions of galaxies and, you know, you guys have heard this before. I'm just regurgitating it as poorly as I possible or as best as I can. It's going to come out poorly, but like, and each one of those galaxies is supermassive black holes, each containing their own galaxies and this and that. And within those are, you know, separate solar systems and stuff with planets just like ours. It's just like, it goes, the shit never ends, you know? So the, the likeliness that they're, our other beings out there is very, very high. According to math, this is not my fucking studies. You know, this is shit that I fucking learned from Nova and, you know, podcasts and reading books and stuff. But I want to believe it. But I've always been fascinated with them since I was a little kid and stuff. I'll often, even now, like have dreams about them and stuff. Like, I can't tell you how many dreams I've had where it's like an alien invasion, you know, and just uh, some type of UFOs and extraterrestrial in my dreams. And I love those dreams though. There's a, I remember having this one dream in particular, dude. And it was one of those dreams where like, in the dream, you knew you were about to find out some crazy shit. And I fucking woke up right before that moment. Of course, like, right? So cliche. And in the dream, I'm like on some farm, another cliche. And there's like a fucking craft hovering the light. And it pulls me up and I'm, in a room though, but I'm not in the room with like the main people. I'm in like a waiting room. And some being or figure comes out. And why are you laughing? <laughs> bro, get it out of your head. Just just continue. <laughs> get it out of your head, bro. I'm trying to like I'm trying to press on here. Okay. I saw <laughs> I'm I scarred him, I think. I think I fucked him up. I think I fucked him up. Please continue. <laughs> um, so I'm in the room, right? But I'm in a waiting room. And some being comes out and she's like, or he, whatever, was like, they'll see you in a few moments, okay? Meaning, 
that I'm about to meet the fucking guy in charge of like everything. Like there was a reason that I was on that ship. And he's like, okay, we'll see you in a minute. And you're going to find out this, this, and that. And here's why. And then I fucking woke up, bro. And in the dream though, I was like, fuck, dude, I'm about to find out some crazy shit right now. Like this is the answer. And then I woke up. So, mm. But it was like these weird supernatural beings and shit. But I always have dreams like that. Were they like humanoid? I don't know. Or you I don't, don't, you I don't think so. I, I, I put it more as like figures. I remember one time… Uh, my fiance got really scared. Because we were sleeping. And… She could have sworn bro. Like… She says she woke up. Granted. We've talked about this before. When you're in between states of waking up. Then those chemicals are still kind of wearing off. So who knows what type of trickery is going on. Or you know… False images that you're seeing that… You think are real when you're in the moment. Especially just waking up really groggy. So <clears throat> I attribute it to that. But she said that she woke up and I'm sleeping. And she could have sworn something was ho hovering over me, bro. And she got so scared that she like screamed at it. To like fucking make it leave me alone and shit. And then she shook me and woke me up and everything. Because she thought something was going to take me. And I was like, oh fuck. Like that's hella crazy. <laughs> like, and you were just having that same dream? Imagine. Like, I don't know, but stuff like that is, like, cool to, like, contemplate. You know what I mean? And, like, another instance. I remember my mom, the same thing. It was shortly, I think, after my grandmother died. And so here's a, a weird story for you. So growing up, there was a, an apartment complex. You know, Tangerine Hill Apartments. Okay, so my grandma lived in this one particular apartment. Um… Shortly before she got sick. She was there for a few years. And this is where I would go spend my time. My dad would drop me off there. And it was like my second home. Long story short, she ends up passing away. And a few years go by. But I spent a lot of time in that apartment. My, my mom, which was two hours away, ended up moving over here from a place called Tracy. Two hours away. Looking for apartments and stuff. Could have ended up in any apartment, any house. But we end up moving into Tangerine Hill. In that same exact apartment that my grandma uh, happened to be living in, right? And… Which is a weird coincidence. So when we moved in there, I was like, I feel like I'm at home already. You know, I like nothing really changed. Like, it's a good vibe here. And my grandmother ended up passing away. And one night, my mom… I guess she had either a dream, but she says it was real. She could have sworn that this really happened. And um, she said that… My grandma came up to her in the middle of the night, woke her up, and told her to be careful with me because I was going to die in a car crash. And then she fucking disappeared and shit. And then she was like all distraught about it. Because she was like, I just seen a ghost and this and that. I was like, holy shit. Like that's hella weird, right? And then it kind of freaked me out, you know? Just because I was… I think I was only like 15 or something like that at the time. So I was… I don't know. I didn't really let it bother me and I didn't think too much about it. But I just thought the fact that like, my grandma used to stay in this fucking apartment. You know what I mean? And then the fact that we moved in here and that she passed away and that she came up to… Like, it was just weird, you know? So, I don't know how I got off the topic from, like, aliens. But I feel like it's supernatural, you know? I've, I, I've always had a, uh, an interest in that particular field because, obviously, it's just an interest of mine. I was just born with it. But I think it's cool to contemplate that kind of stuff. You never know. Yeah, I agree. Um, when it comes to like supernatural, spiritual type stuff, I'm really skeptical on that kind of stuff. Um, just because we have no means of measurement, you know. Um, people claim that, you know, the soul's a thing and it's real, and but there isn't like a uh, quantifiable means of, you know, point proving that there's a soul. Well, they're they're researching it right now. I'll I'll. I'll let you know after you finish here, but there is some research. Hmm, I wasn't aware. But again, so for me, the, the what I go back to, and again, this could be just me being naive on the subject, but how can you measure that? And then, so these people that, like ghost hunters, they have all these technologies, cameras that do this and that, special lights and recording audio. It's like, for me to prove that something works, I have to have a means of testing it. But if you don't have like a test ghost in a box, <laughs> you know, okay, we know there's a ghost in this box. So we can test this equipment on that ghost to see if it does what we need it to do. You know what I'm saying? There's, mm. 
So for me, when it comes to that kind of stuff, it's I'm skeptical. However, I mean, throughout the history of time, you have uh, stories that are, you know, being put out by, you know, either people from a church or just everyday people that get passed on through time. And it's like, maybe there's some something real about it because a lot of people experience these kinds of things. So I'm like, I want to experience something on my own so I can see like, hey, like I believe it because I've seen it. But I'm also scared. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not going to be happy. Like, you know, whatever it is I might be seeing, you know, I was like, okay, this is very real. Now I'm terrified. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, granted, I've had… Yeah, be careful what you wish for. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, when I was living with uh, with my cousin, there was… In town? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We <clears throat> Everyone's had their own, their own accounts of ghosts. I think I remember you know? this story. His mom told it, right? She may have. I'm. Not, I can't recall one from her. I'm just the one that I personally okay. dealt with, but right. I can't say definitively it was a ghost or an apparition of some sort. But uh, I was getting up one morning, or maybe you know, late morning, early afternoon, and I walked to the bathroom. And Sean and I had something to do that day, and so I'm walking in there, and I'm walking toward the bathroom from my room, if you remember where my room was. And as I look toward, um, it's right there, bro. It's like yeah, I look toward Sean's room. I seen. What I thought was like a person, I thought it was Sean, walked from his room down the other hallway toward like the living room area. So I start talking to like it's Sean. I'm like, hey man, like da 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 And I'm not getting a response. I'm like, hey man, you ignoring me? So I go back out there and look and Sean's like passed out in his bed still because the door's open. And I remember thinking to myself like, that's weird. I know I saw a bo- someone because it was right as I was passing through the bathroom door. So it was like, I couldn't get a, a you know, a face. It was you just like… You could have sworn you saw it? Yeah, like I knew that I, I I was talking to who I thought was Sean, you know. And so he the uh, there was one other instance that I that I could recall vaguely and it was like I saw somebody standing out. So you know when you're walking down the hall from our rooms toward the kitchen, that big window that was on, This is a, the second time? A second time. Well, a second occurrence. I don't know which one happened first, but um I remember seeing like a silhouette walking by uh there was nobody out. I went to look, there was nobody out there. You know, so, and you still refuse to. Well, obviously that's not enough. Well, because because I've seen because uh, I've seen like it was a silhouette. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It, it could have been. You need to see it. Yeah, like uh, a, like, like a demon no in front question, of me. No yeah, question. Yeah, asked. or like, and I'm talking. I don't like, even like bringing that, saying that word, but like it's and, crazy. And like, uh, I have to see it, but I have to also not be. I have to be awake, like. For an extended period of time, so it's not like you can attribute it to like you were coming out of a slumber and you exactly. were still half asleep. You know what I'm saying? Like I wanted to be, I was fully engaged throughout my day, and then boom, it happens. Mm-hmm. You know, and then I want to be able to see like if I can facial features or whatever. I just don't like seeing shadows. Like it's, to me, that's not enough. It could have been any number of things that caused that, you know, to 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 surface. You know. So, um, like I said, they do they have done studies on this type of thing. Maybe not ghosts per se, but like what happens after you die, right? How do you measure that? And the only thing that, I mean, I guess that they've come up with other than you're like your woo-wah type of studies of like, you know, spirituality and stuff, but like actual physical, phys- definitive evidence that the soul lives on, you know? So I forget what it was called, but what they do is pe- people come in and they get a notebook and they go into like the ICU and stuff and they wait for patients to die basically, right? So with enough studies, they found out that a lot of these people that were being revived, that were coming back after they were officially flatlined for, I'm talking like 30 minutes up to an hour, right? When they should be fucking dead and there shouldn't be any brain activity or anything like that, right? Well, they end up reviving these people or even during like a heart transplant or something like that where they're kind of just keeping them like alive artificially. So a lot of cases like this, but they'll come back and then they'll give an interview when when they're able to the person that died and passed away. And a lot of them have like crazy evidence that they were in that room while they were dead. And to prove that, they were like, okay, well, describe this, this, and that. So like one of the patients actually described and was standing behind the doctor as he was sitting down writing on the notepad. And she was able to describe scribbles and actual sentences that were written down 
on his fucking notebook before… Like she didn't go over and look at it. She described that to him. And I think they were saying like 96% of the… Uh, the like details that they were describing back about what was going on in the room were 96% accurate. So after they died, bro. So like they would come back and describe like details about the room and shit. That's crazy because I remember coming across a video regarding something similar to that. Now, granted, I butchered that. Whether or not it was a study or not, I can't, you know, I can't say for certain. But there was a bunch of doctors that also on the same side disprove a lot of the stuff because of the people that are recalling some of these instances, there was another, there was another group of people that they had their version of what they saw that was nothing remotely close to what actually took place, you know, even though they're describing what so they the opposite. Yeah, so, um, I don't know that we'll ever… So, how would you just explain that though? Like, them being that accurate, you know? Couldn't tell Post-op. you, man. I just… It may, I, I have no explanation for it, you know? It's yeah. just… It's pretty crazy though, right? That they would imagine that though, like somebody died and they come back and tell you, like, yo, that was a good egg that you cooked up in the kitchen while I was, you know, <laughs> like you would have been like, How the fuck did you know that I, you know, made it over easy and threw some pepper on it? And you'd be like, I was standing there right there watching you. And then that's when you get into the like people or you interview them. But then at that point, you don't really know who to believe because anybody could just be saying shit, you know. Like when people tell you, I felt like there was somebody in the room with me, you know, watching me and this and that, and it's like well, half is true and then maybe half is not, you know. Who knows? Maybe they're trying to dope up the story. Yeah, it's a very… It's a slippery slope. Very gray area. I don't think we'll ever be able to make it black and white. Mm-hmm. I think it's always going to be, you know, for the most part, gray. How, how about this one, bro? Go ahead. No, go ahead. That's it. Um, have you ever seen… Uh, it, there was a show called Ghosts Inside My Child. But I think they should have called it Reincarnated. So basically, it's little kids… I'm talking like three to five or six, ten, below that area, uh, but the age range. And um, a lot of these kids, they experience like night terrors and stuff like that. And like really, really like, like if, if they had trauma in their life, but they're little kids, you know. And um, there was this one kid who, and this is like a lot of kids, you know. This is not just like one or two cases, but here's one of the instances. Uh, one of these kids uh, could have sworn, bro, that he in his past life was a… Uh, um, an architect for the Titanic. And he he was like fucking five or six, bro. And he was able to describe in detail and draw out like the uh, blueprint of the Titanic and give you actual names. And he knew what these kind of pipes were for. And uh, he knew like why the ship sunk and everything like that. And he actually gave him a fucking name of the actual engineer that worked on it. And they looked up the name and it was an actual dude. So he, he believes 100% that he was that dude in the past life. And he would wake up screaming like, because he drowned or, or, or because he uh, caused the ship to, uh, to drown or to sink. You know what I mean? And uh, it weighed heavy on him. Because I think the dude that that happened to ended up taking his life or something like that. But it was like really like traumatic shit. And the kid was going through like night terrors. And he had severe PTSD as a child, bro. How are you going to teach a little kid like that? These extreme details, you know. He wouldn't have any, any context other, other than what's already in his head, you know. Yeah, I don't even know what to say on that one. That's yeah. There's a lot of cases like pretty that. compelling, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. And then that's why I said they should have called it reincarnated. And then there's these other little kids that like speak full other other languages, like Japanese, because in their past life they were like uh, they were obviously Japanese, you know. And they would do paintings and stuff, and they're like savants. But they, with with that comes like trauma because they understand, at least in their heads, they un- they understand that they had a past life and who they are now is not like their real home, you know. Yeah, I don't even know what to make of that, man. I mean, again, who am I to say that that's true or not true? You know, I mean, again, I don't know how a, we'll just say a 10-year-old knows that in detail stuff about the Titanic when, you know, adults, like me, I was interested in the Titanic as as an adult. I was watching documentaries. I want to know exactly what led to, because there's a bunch of different theories about what actually led to uh, we all know the iceberg hit, but they were talking about why, even though it was deemed unsinkable, mm-hmm. how it still sank. And, uh, but I couldn't name any type of structure or pipe or, you know. Type it on YouTube. Type in uh, Ghosts of My Child Titanic and it should come up. Some, it should come up. And uh, check out that episode, dude. But it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. So it's like I don't… I couldn't even begin to 
formulate an opinion about whether or not it's true. Because like, I don't know how you would explain that. And there was people like verifying his work. Like the kid, he was like, yeah, that's that type of stovepipe or, or like a stack that would come out of the actual ship. And the dad was like, dude, we didn't teach him this stuff. And like, how the hell does he know this, you know? And there's that, that's what the whole show is about. That's the premise of kids of instances like this. There's, there's ones where uh, a kid, uh, he died on impact from a parachute accident. There was another kid that was like a, a pilot in World War II and it, it died and he was like a Japanese. He was a Japanese pilot and just all kinds of stuff, dude. It was just crazy. Like he was reincarnated as a little kid, but he was a soldier in his past life. A lot of stuff like that, you know? Just super, super crazy. Which was interesting to me and just kind of threw another uh, uh, stick in the spokes as to like, okay, well, there's maybe your soul does live on, you know? Who knows? I, there's no way to really find out. Yeah. But, but you will find out. What do you out. guys think? Drop down in the comments and let us know if you guys have had any experiences or if you believe in that. I know. I, I like talking about this stuff. Uh, I want to know all your ghost stories and everything. I get into it like… I won't watch movies like The Exorcist or anything like that just because I don't fuck with that shit. It scares me. Like, it really does because it's like spiritual shit. But I like hearing people's stories. <clears throat> yeah, my uh, my girlfriend, she's really into the Conjuring movies. I don't like that shit. And though. I guess there's… They, have, they call it the Conjuring universe. Like, there's a string of movies like The Nun, The Nun 2, <laughs> all that stuff. Um, it, it, it's the, There's a sequence. If you're watching a particular sequence and not in the sequence in which the movies were released, mm -hmm. you can watch it from basically the start to the finish. And so since she likes it, I'm not big on horror movies myself. They, I think they're like… okay, Depends here, what it is. But to me, it's like, okay, here comes the crash. Boom. Uh, everyone's scared. You know, here comes… You know, I'm not a big fan of them because it, it's… Uh, to me, a lot of ways they're corny. But having said that, watching these movies in that particular thing and then closely it being associated with like church mm. it's like it does get eerie that's what scares know? me bro that shit the, the unknown is what scares me that's so, why i don't fuck with it i approach it with respect i don't talk down on it i don't know anything about it because whether i'm religious or not i still feel a connection to like spirituality in some capacity and i can't even really pinpoint it i couldn't even tell you like what are my beliefs you know and i wouldn't even know what to call that what is that agnostic i don't know I have no idea. Yeah, I believe agnostic is you don't have a particular religion, but you do acknowledge there's a higher being. I mean, I, yeah. I think that's like a, a rough… It feels like know, that to me, bro. Connotation uh, of what it, you know, uh, agnostic individual is. But yeah. What would you consider yourself? I know this is muddy waters right now, but… I would say… Christianity oriented. Okay. Um, I was raised as a Catholic, but so was didn't, I. didn't like to attend. Like, I've never started my first communion or confirmation, uh, any of that type of stuff. Uh, was never really intrigued by it. I was always forced to go. Uh -huh. um, however, recently um, is kind of when I started get, getting more interested in the spiritual world and uh, listening to, you know, podcasts and stuff. Like, ironically, we're not we're talking about it. You know, I talked about, um, you know, off screen about… Uh, Jordan Peterson, and I forget the name of the particular bishop, but he's extremely, um, uh, what do you call it? Sorry. You're fine. He's extremely popular as far as uh, Catholics go. He's like, he has like a figurehead that's like on social media that has millions of followers on Instagram and, and stuff like that. And I actually listened to that entire podcast and it was quite compelling. I was like, I actually really enjoyed this, you know, and just them talking about the necessity of the church and, um, the necessity for spirituality and how it orients people's morals and ethics. I think it does, bro. It puts you on a path of like a better lifestyle for sure. And uh, well, I mean, statistically, they say people that are believers, are they? a lot of times they live longer too just because they have something to grasp onto. They feel like they have purpose, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as claiming like definitively, like, yes, I'm a Christian or I'm a Catholic or yeah. a Muslim or whatever, like… Um, I can't say at this point I have one. I just say I, I I lean toward Christianity. I wouldn't I wouldn't know, man. I just think whatever makes you a better person, lean towards that. But for myself personally, I can't really say just because I've got I ponder so many questions and I can't really be sure, and I, it's hard to convince me of anything. But I mean, like I said, I, I approach it with respect. Anybody's religion. I used to be like again. I was in the same boat. 
you know, uh, to the point when I started talking to this about my mother, and she was like, I never thought that I was going to live to hear the day where you say that you're interested in, mm. in that aspect of life, you know. And I think it started because… Uh, I was listening to a podcast with Jordan Peterson and I was intrigued by his recollection of scripture. Like he would just be like, oh, you know, first this says… Is he religious? Uh, yes. He, I, I would step into this recent episode because he, he, normally his response to that question is, I choose to act, I choose to live my life as though God exists. Or I choose to act as if though God exists. So it's kind of like a roundabout way of answering the question without saying, yes, <laughs> I'm religious or no, I'm not. But he says he says that because actions they prove more than just the words you utter. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, my actions should tell you whether or not that I'm a religious person or not. You know? Yeah. But in that podcast with that uh, Catholic bishop, he said, yes, I'm, I'm religious. But anyway, so he he started get my, getting me intrigued by it because he would… His theory is that there's… Whether or not you're religious or not, you, it's hard to deny that there's social utility in the Bible. There's things in the Bible that help us be better people, how to live a better life and find meaning in life. And the way he breaks down these stories from the Bible, it's, he, it, it applies to everything that we go through in life today in 2021. It's not like, okay, well, that applied back in, you know, 4,000 years ago or however long ago the Bible was written. Like, to, in current times today, you, these things still have significant importance. And the reason he says that it's lasted this long is because it does bear some value to, you know, humans. Otherwise, it would have just faded away like other things in the past that have. But the fact that it's stood the test of time and it, these are stories worth repeating, he says that there's utility in that come from the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so I started talking about this to one of my buddies at work that's that I um, found out that was uh, extremely religious. And he broke down the stories to me. And it was in a fashion where I wasn't being solicited a, a religion. It was just, I asked a question and he answered it. And then if he needed to, he would resort to the Bible to, um, to, to support his, what, you know, his claim. He would even tell me stories about like weird stories, bro. Like just to not get off too much and stuff. But um, he said his dad was like a store manager for Walmart. So his dad was making like 250 G's a year, like making really good money. And he, uh, his dad got involved in drugs and everything was kind of going on a downward spiral. And um, there was this uh, minister maybe or a pastor that would like an evangelist that would just go, you know, throughout the States and doing preaching. When his dad was rather successful, that's when they met. Years down the road, when his dad starts going down this downward slope, he gets a random call. From, like his dad got a call from him late, like at, I don't know, 10, 11 o'clock our times. And so probably like two in the morning because I think he's from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Hey, you and your family came to my mind and I can sense that something bad is looming in your future. Like get right with I God. I hate that shit, bro. And within like, I don't know, a short amount of time later, his dad lost his job with that, you know, 250 grand a year, you know, income gone. Uh, he reached out to various individuals, that same guy. And says, look, like, I, I sense there's, you know, death is looming in your future. Guy got right with God the next day Who hit by train. Who is this guy? I, I, don't, I don't know his name. I forgot his name. But somebody told him this? Yeah. Um, no, this is a guy that my buddy met personally. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. and so he's just giving accounts and, like, personal accounts, like, with his, with his dad, you know. And he's like, so how can you explain? So the guy died, though, after no, he told him that. Okay, so the guy that… Got, that he told, so like this, this preacher told this guy that came to the church. Yeah, I get that part. But it's like after he said, like, I, I feel like there's going to yeah, be Yeah, the guy death. died. Yeah. The guy fucking did that. The guy died. Yeah. You know, I think he was like hit by a train or something like that. So, something that led to his death. But before he died, he was like a week before he died, he was able to get right with God and, wow. you know, whatnot and stuff. So he's like, how do you explain that kind of stuff? How do you like, explain him actually taking that advice into consideration? Like, most people would just be like, dude, this guy's crazy. Yeah, you right? know. And then… Uh, he must so, have sensed it too then. Possibly. I, I couldn't tell you, man. It, it's, it's, there's no rational explanation for any of this in this. I mean, like as far as if you don't believe in spirituality, there's, how else can you explain any of these, these occurrences? I mean, know? religion is spirituality, right? Basically. Um, I don't, I could be very wrong. I don't know. I'm sorry. For, for people that I talk to that are actually into this kind of stuff, they say that they don't, they don't, 
Uh, they're not religious because they feel relig- being say that you're religious, you're not doing it for the right purposes. Like, so what has been now, if you That's, guys in the I've comments. I've always said this, bro. Exactly what you're about to say. So, like, if, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, guys, but, because uh, again, I'm not, you know, a theologian. Um, but uh, it's the whole purpose of at least Christianity is, is a relationship with God. And if you are to, that's, that's like the thing, you you and him are buddies. You guys, like he's your creator. You, you know, you pay all your glory to him. And some people feel that if you just get caught in the everyday, okay, like I go to church, I do, I give offering, I do what I'm supposed to do. People lose their way and they just, they like, they let their religion define them and they're not actually having a forming a relationship with God. They're just saying, oh, I'm religious. You know, I go to church every Sunday. I do X, I do Y. Yet they're not actually developing or forming a relationship with God himself. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's like, so people, so this other guy I work with, that's an extremely, well, I call him religious. He goes, I'm not religious. I have a really good relationship with God. And that's what he told me. And so I, I kind of like, I like where their heads were at with that. Mm-hmm. You know, because like for a person that goes to church, he like runs the youth uh, ministry and all that stuff. And he's like, I'm not religious. I just have a really good relationship with God. So I don't know that spirituality and religion are the same in some sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I could. Like I said, I could be very wrong. I don't know. And, I'm I, sorry. That, and that's just my, maybe my naive interpretation of that. Yeah, I really don't speak too much on, on it because I really don't know a lot about it. I don't want to speak out of pocket. You know what I mean? So I would never denigrate anybody's like beliefs or lifestyle, right? Because I have no… And no evidence to back it, right? Or no knowledge to back it. So I can't say that yours is wrong and mine is right. You know, I can't say that. So it's just, I feel like whatever makes you a better person, just go with that. You know what I'm saying? Within the right context, you know, because you could believe that ripping people off and stealing cars is making you a better person, you know? So, but if that's the case, don't go with that. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Uh, So, which is uh, interesting you say that because… Well, we spent two of our first episodes talking about Jordan Peterson's book. Yeah. And Ryan, so he has podcasts that come out maybe like twice a week or so. And he has one with that uh, Roman bishop I was talking about. And they basically were talking about, uh, the the bishop was saying like all roads lead to God in some way, whether you're doing good things of good or things of bad. Because if you do things that are bad, in your perverse sense of, in, per, in perverse mind, even you doing terrible things is in your, is, it was it's good, you know. And he's talking about well, even if you think of it like that, like you can still found you can find salvation through these terrible acts. Therefore, still the road still leads you to God. Bro, right? I hate saying this, but look at what happens when people hijack airplanes. They, they in their head they believe they were doing that for a religious purpose. Well, right? granted, I mean uh, I would. I'm sticking spe- uh, specifically on the but, terms of… But it's kind uh, of the same thing, you know? It, it's, yeah, I can see what you're saying. He believed it was good. Yeah. So he followed that religion regardless. And I like Jordan's stance on it because he's like, I don't agree with that because there are still… That's still an ill advice. We know that that's… Morals. Not, yeah, we we know that it's bad. So there's he's like, I don't believe that… He, He's like, how can you make anything good out of the Columbine shooters? Yeah. He's like, you know, these guys went in there with the direct intent to kill these people. He goes, and the bishop's like, well, see, but like in their mind, in their perverse sense of the word right, they are good. That was them carrying out their good will. That was the definition of good to them. You know, and but and he's like, but again, so he explains how like you can still find salvation through this kind of stuff. Like it, whether it's bad and you and repent later, you still found God in the process. And I think the message he was trying to make, and I'm probably doing a terrible job in explaining what that bishop was trying to say. It's not like he says, hey, go out there and kill people. You're a good person. He's just trying to say that, like, no matter what road you take, it still leads you to God. Yeah. You know, in some sense. And Jordan was like, no, I don't agree with that just because I can't make any sense of how anyone that has any morals. <laughs> you know what this kind of reminds you know? me of? Did you send me this meme uh, where it was like, yo, free the homie and this and that? Like, uh, y'all didn't have to do him like that. And then the comments were like, yo, he killed 12 people. Put him under the jail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, there, yeah, like, yo, free so and so and this and that. Like, he didn't do nothing. It's like, meanwhile, like, his fucking records were like, yeah, he fucking robbed 12 stores and shot this. <laughs> but it's yeah. like, yeah, I think, no, like, not bury him. Yeah, yeah, don't free him, <laughs> you know, type of shit. Uh, Bro, this podcast just went completely the other way. From where it started? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up on this one. We'll do another one if you want to. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I was going to ask you, 
Do you have anything that would uh, contribute to like the weekly challenge segment? Do you have anything in particular that you could think of just maybe off the top of your head? I'm still kind of gray. Like what has worked for you? Like I'm still kind of gray on what you what what your weekly challenges from the past entail. So maybe you could throw one out and then for the next one I can Well, for example, one. like I would say uh make a phone call to somebody that you haven't that you feel like your relationship was tainted for whatever reason, you know. If there's bad blood between you guys, be the one who comes out and tries to rectify the relationship, you know what I mean? Or uh, something as simple as make yourself a healthy meal this week as opposed to eating fast food all week. Or something as simple as like, okay, tell your loved ones that you love, that you love them. Don't hide that inside of you. you know? I, I got one. Okay. Weekly challenge. Episode 30, 30, 31? This is 32. 32. Weekly challenge for episode 32. Read a book. That's a good one. Read a book. Find one that you seem interested in and crack open a page. And if you're anything like me, that wasn't something very easily done. Yeah. I had to have some <laughs> so upsetting things take place in my life for me to want to turn to a book to, to get information. Okay. I've never turned back. So let me, uh, let me reverse a little bit because I didn't anticipate doing the weekly challenge. But let me spit out how we actually got to this point and why I do the weekly challenges. So… This is the segment of the podcast, which I haven't done in a while just because I've been trying to, you know, get momentum and stuff and introducing John and all that. So he's new to this. But um, this is the segment of the podcast that I call the PO3 Pathway Weekly Challenge, the Stigma Enigma. <clears throat> and basically, I call it the Stigma Enigma is because whatever it is on any stigma, and this one in particular is mental health, uh, whatever it is that terrifies you to speak up about, fill in that blank for yourself so that I give my all. And stigma, that's the acronym of stigma. So that I give my all. <clears throat> so whatever stigma on mental illness or whatever it is that you're going through in your life, plug that in so that you give your all, right? So the challenge is to walk the PO3 pathway with me and do what I'm doing, you know, face my challenges head on, right? And flip stigma, you know, and put the acronym to it so that I give my all. So that's exactly why we do this. Uh, why I started doing this segment is to give you guys the incentive to take the challenge and walk the PO3 path, you know, and and um, you know, small, small, uh, big changes come in small shifts, you know. That's why I throw out challenges that are really, really simple, you know. It's not something like take the 90 day challenge, you know. It's just, it's not like that. It's just something as simple as like, all right, if you just do enough of these challenges, then eventually you'll you'll build the confidence to do bigger things, you know. So that's kind of what I wanted. That's kind of like the premise of the challenge idea. So, yeah, I like it. Well, walk the path with us. Read a book. It'll, Any book. Uh, it don't matter what it is. Just challenge yourself to read a book. Preferably something you're interested in. I mean, I'd say that's a good start. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to… It won't maintain your attention span. But uh, yeah, read a book. And hopefully, it'll open up a world that it has for me. It's nothing… It's pretty peaceful sitting down outside. It's not when the weather's just right. Yeah, and crack for, open a book and have a way. Can it can it be an audio book? Yeah, I don't see why not. Right. I mean, I feel like it's the same thing because for me personally, I have to have the audio book form, otherwise my ADD will take over. And uh I'm thinking of ten other things other than what I'm reading in front of me, you know. Yeah, an audio, you know, traditional book with text, that's just, fine. Just take in some information that's going to better you, you know. You know, something that that's not from within, you know, in your head, just external information, you know. That's why reading is so good, bro. Just because you can get so much shit out of it. So. Exactly. I mean, the amount of thought you could put into a book or extract from a book, you know, versus just hearing someone talk because when they're formulating their, you know, their story or whatever it is they're trying to put down on paper, there goes a, an immense amount of thought goes into the words that they select and the phrases and stuff. So they're going to put all the stuff they need into that text, you know. And so if you're able to read it or get it in audiobook format, you know, you'll be able to take that before that versus just listening to someone talk about it briefly. So. And all, and also, I w I don't personally give out challenges that I don't do myself and have already done or am in the process of doing. So I would never ask you guys to do anything that I haven't already done or I'm about to do. So that's my thing here. And I know this guy reads, so. Yep. He's not asking anything impossible. But um, if you guys enjoy the content here on the PO3 podcast channel, please drop a like. Subscribe, uh, share, comment, all that good stuff. It really helps out the channel where 
on a mission to grow this channel this year. And uh, like, I, I got the sign, guys. What more do you want? You know, like I built the sign with my bare <laughs> well, I know hands. what I want. I want you guys to hit that bell for notifications. So whenever one of these new episodes does drop, you guys get instantly notified and you can start to watch it and jam along with us. Hell yeah, and man. As we all plot through our, you know, we go through our journey. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of the PO3 podcast. Um, it's been great. I had a good laugh. Yeah. So, <laughs> we'll try and forget that. Yeah. If that happens. I don't know. It's going to be out there forever now. So it's okay. It's all right. But uh, hope you guys have a good week and uh, tune in next Monday, 9 a.m. for the next episode of the PO3 podcast. My name is Marcus Marks. And you're with Dust John. 